Be sure you download the note card that goes along with this sermon, and you can print it out, and you can follow along. Fill it in as you follow the sermon. If you like this sermon, want to see more like this, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Also, hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when other new content is added to this site. We try to add sermons as often as we can. We'll try to add some Bible question and answers that we've done before in the past. Other things we may be adding to this. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. If you'd like to follow us on social media, there are links to our social media accounts in the video description below. Now, let's jump into the sermon. We often like to divide people into groups. As one person once said, there are two kinds of people. Those who divide everybody into two groups of people and those who don't. We might be tempted to divide people into two groups, those who believe in God and those who don't. But just making this statement can be misleading. For instance, we could divide these, subdivide these groups even more. There are those who are confident no God exists. We call those atheists. And those who believe God may exist, but they're not, not convinced. We call them agnostics or skeptics. And then on the one side, those who believe in God, we could further subdivide. There are those who believe in God, but don't believe God. And there are those who both believe in God and believe God. What's the difference, you may ask? Well, a great deal. One accepts God's existence. The other also unquestionably accepts God's way as truth. And most of us sit between these two extremes daily growing in our commitment and faith. And so in 2 Peter chapter 1 and in verse 5, supposed to be a 1 there, 1 in verse 5, for this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge, he tells us there. And then verse 8, for if these qualities, he says, are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our goal is to follow the direction of Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5, to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. We strive to reach the point that we unquestionably follow God's will and in all areas of life. Yet as we grow, there are still times of doubt. Now I want to consider in this lesson Peter's situation when he walked on water as an example of a faith in flux, in very ups and downs, we could call that. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 22, beginning, get your Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 14, drop down to verse 22. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowds, and after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, Is it a ghost? And they cried out with fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. 
Jesus immediately reached out his hand, took hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. I want to notice this idea in this lesson about believing God is not always easy. Not always easy to believe in God. I want you to notice, first of all, in this lesson, that Peter heard, saw, and believed Jesus. We have no doubt Peter believed in Jesus. It was Peter who in John chapter 6 and verse 68 said Jesus had the words of life. It was Peter who in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 16 said Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God. Peter believed the person on the water was Jesus. Lord, if it is you, he said, command me to come to you on the water, Matthew 14 and verse 28. The issue was not proof. Just saying come did not prove he was Jesus. Peter already believed or he would have never gotten out of the boat. When Peter sank, Jesus' response was, why did you doubt? Matthew 14, verse 31. Did Peter doubt it was really Jesus on the water? I don't believe so. After all, when he began to sink, you notice in verse 30, he cried out, Lord, save me. Peter believed in Jesus. Peter believed it was Jesus. But Peter still had to struggle with faith. He needed to grow in faith, not growing belief in Jesus, but grow in believing Jesus, believing what Jesus told him. There is a difference. And again, we saw in verse 31, Peter committed to doing what Jesus commanded. Peter told uh, Jesus commanded him to come. Peter went beyond mental assent. He committed himself. The boat was being battered by waves, not the easiest water to swim in. He would not be easily pulled out if he couldn't walk. But he committed himself to following the Lord's command, going again beyond mental assent. Mature faith is not just an initial decision to obey. Mature faith is not attained because we take the first step onto the water. Or can I say that first step into the water, speaking of baptism. That is the beginning, but making that step does not equal mature faith. You see, Peter started his walk with Christ, but looking around, he began to sink. Peter's doubt was not about who was on the water. That wasn't his doubt. Peter's doubt was not about wanting to obey. Peter's doubt was about whether or not Jesus' way was best. Jesus said, come. Peter got on the water, but then began to look around, seeing the wind. Peter became afraid. He suddenly doubted the wisdom of, walk, of walking to Jesus. This is where we get to the heart of the matter. I think this happens to us at times. Look at several areas where we allow doubt to get in the way of our walk with God. There's doubt that wrecks families. Consider the doubt. We believe in marriage is God's pattern for relational fulfillment. It was designed to provide personal happiness because men and women alone and separated are incompatible, according to uh, we find there in uh, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. Consider the havoc 
doubt has caused regarding salvation. We know God will save us by grace through faith based upon the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We understand we must believe and confess our sins. Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10. Repent of our sins. Be baptized for the remission of our sins. Acts 2, 38. And then we saw we must continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. However, doubt creeps in, rearing its ugly head in two ways. First, some begin to doubt the aspect of God's grace, constantly plagued about whether or not some sin they committed is going to condemn them to a devil's hell. They do not recognize their fear and regret demonstrate their own repentance, which leads to salvation. Far too often, they will convince themselves they can never be saved and give up. The other aspect of doubt is facing the wind and waves of controversy that surrounds the Bible doctrine of salvation. Some take this step, and then when they come into contact with those who are adamantly opposed to water baptism as part of salvation, they begin to backtrack. They have doubt and start to equivocate eventually abandoning the truth altogether. God's plan for salvation is clear. It consists of grace and faithful surrender. We have no need to fear those who oppose, nor do we need to fear God, that God will forget his promise of grace. Grow your faith and follow God's pattern unashamedly. And then there's trouble caused by doubt with the church her worship, and work. We recognize Jesus established his church for a purpose, to bring glory to him. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. To uphold the truth. The church is the pillar and ground of truth. It holds up the truth, which sets men free. John eight thirty two. you'll know the truth. The truth sets you free. Since our job is to glorify God His way and help people to be set free from sin by God's truth, we refuse to get distracted with our works. When we worship, we do what we see God authorizes in the New Testament. For example, we refuse to sing with instrumental accompaniment because we find no authority for it in the New Testament. Also, we have refused to become involved in patterns of church work which we cannot find authority. The church's work is not feeding the homeless, helping cure cancer, educating the poor. Those are all good things. They are just not the job of the church. However, we sometimes see the wind of opposition. We are attacked with slanderous statements, false accusations, and names. Additionally, we see some churches getting involved in these things, and they seem to have success. We wonder, is the way we find authorized in Scripture the best way? Doubt sets in. Perhaps a little change here, a little change there, and then the church has abandoned God's mission. Grow your faith. God's pattern for the church is what is best. Follow it without shame. Now, given time, we could think of other areas where doubt arises. But these four demonstrate we can believe in God. But not only believe in Him, we can believe God. Whether in these or other issues, we must recognize God's way is best. There is no need to doubt based on any wind or waves we face while walking on the water with Jesus. We find also that when doubt overcame Peter, what did he do? He turned back to Jesus. Now, having demonstrated that doubt causes problems, we need to also consider how to deal with doubt. First, recognize that having doubted is not going to condemn us to hell in and of itself. Peter did not drown as a result of his doubt, even though he began to sink. Why not? Because when Peter recognized he was sinking, he turned back to Jesus. Matthew chapter 14, verse 30. Sadly, too often, 
we turn to other sources, our own intelligence, the wisdom of the world, personal experience. Instead, we need to go headlong into Jesus, turning our efforts toward getting to know him. If we turn back to Jesus, we may sink for a while, but we will not drown. The trouble is, for Peter, it was evident he was sinking. For us, it is not cl so clear. Thus, we must be on the alert. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 talks us we need to be on the alert for our adversary, the devil. He's uh, like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Only by the diligence, rightly dividing the word, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, can we be aware of sinking from Christ's standard. When we have parted from Christ's path on the water, cry out to him, lean on his hand, do what he says. Peter did not grab hold of the boat when he began to sink. He cried out to Jesus. Jesus lifted him and together they walked on water back to the boat. That's what we must do. And there are those, of course, <clears throat> whose doubt keeps them from even stepping out on the water. They don't think serving God will bring happiness. They don't think it is for them right now. God created us. He wrote the manual for our lives. He knows what we need to do right now. He knows what will provide us with peace. You believe in God. Why not believe God? Accepting what he says about all things, no matter who disagrees with him. And he tells us what we must do to be saved. John 16, 30, the Philippian jailer asked that very question. He has revealed to us the gospel must be heard. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing through the words of Christ. You'll know the truth. The truth will set you free. The gospel must be believed. Jesus said, I told you you would die in your sin, for unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sin. Whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved, Mark 16 and 16. Sins must be repented of. Jesus said, I tell you, no, unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. The time of this ignorance God overlooked now commands all people everywhere to repent. That's what he commands us. We must confess with the mouth, Jesus is Lord. He is the Son of God. We must acknowledge him, Matthew 10, verse 32. Everyone, he, Jesus said, who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Then there must be scriptural baptism. Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sin, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, that being salvation. The Holy Spirit searched the mind of God, revealed the plan of salvation to the writers of the New Testament, and then they reveal it to us through their writings. We find in Colossians chapter 2 that baptism is a burial. Romans chapter 6, 3 and 4 re reveals we are buried in baptism, not a sprinkling, not a pouring, but a burial. And then there must be continued growth of the Christian. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2, we're to be like newborn babes desiring the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. 2 Peter 3 verse 18, we're to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to be him, to him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. And then be faithful unto death, he says there, and I will give you the crown of life. Now, Bob's your uncle. Now, if you found this video helpful and want to learn more, be sure you download 
the note card that might be with it. Now, we may not have the website back up yet, so if you don't find that note card and want this note card, uh, write to me at M-A-C-M-I-K-E-A-L at M-A-C dot com. We also have a free four-lesson Bible correspondence course that you can take at your leisure and learn more about God's plan of salvation. You'll find the links to each of these in the description below. Now, we here at the Spring Hill Church of Christ want to help you with your growth in the knowledge of God's Word. Remember, we are in it for the likes and the subs, so be sure to subscribe and tell others about this, this channel and also give us a like, would you? With that, thanks for watching or listening. In the meantime, in between time, we'll see you next time. With that, Bob's your uncle.